कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram ra ram hari hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Jai Prabhu Pada Jai Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jai Prabhu Pada परिणाम संकीर्तन की जय श्री प्रोपाद की जय संवेद गौर भक्त वृंद की जय हरे कृष्ण ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंदस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टम स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदामयम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वंदे हम श्री गुरो श्री पदकलम श्री गुरु वैष्णवाम श्री रुवाम सग्रचाम सहगन रघुनवितम तम सजीवम सावेतम सावूतम परिजन सहितम कृष्ण चैतन्य देवम श्री आधा कृष्ण सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखान वितांश्य नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय बुद्धले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामिन्नतिनामिने 
नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामने गौर ध्वषे नम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभुनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो वी लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर दिस इज कॉन डिसाइपल कोर्स and we appreciate your endeavors to take out your valuable time to join this important course hare krishna so we welcome each one of you and you will be very happy to know that uh, this time for idc we have almost 50 participants so all of you must be wondering that probably in this room there are only seems 25 or 26 but uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I like to briefly introduce his grace, Bhamsivadan Pru. So Bhamsivadan Pru, he has done his BBS from Pune University, and he is a medical doctor by profession. He was introduced to Krishna in nineteen ninety six, and uh, he joined full time in uh, Pune. as a brahmachari in the year 1999 so he has served in uh, various uh, ways including youth college preaching and corporate preaching departments and after that proji has moved in the ching field since a very long period and he has been a teacher in uh, uh, teaching courses like bhakti shastri bhakti vaibhav bhakti vedanta ttc is con disciple course he travels regularly in whole of india and because of this corona issue i think proji is uh, it it might be his long stay after many many years in one place otherwise proji is uh, continuously moving he is also a member of iscon board of examinations and is serving as a secretary general for iscon leads and uh, proji is a very exemplary person by his own practice also and uh, as you might have heard also premanam pru glorifying proji and saying that his grace radhesham pru told at one point of time to his grace vamsi vadan pru that uh, prabhu you need not fill your sadhana card because we rarely hear radhesham pru saying that to anybody but uh, proji was so diligent in his sadhana and all time 100% sadhana scores so we are really very very grateful that proji accepted to give uh, this idc course and i'd like to heartily welcome proji by three times loudly chanting viro 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 and they are just like to settle some norms for that so i also would like to you know in during this idc course we'll try to follow certain norms which uh, all of you can hear and try to follow 
so as we had mentioned in the registration page itself that attendance requirement for this course is 100% you cannot miss any class and uh, based on that only your certificate and further things are done you know certificate and then initiation and everything happens in that way so attendance will be 100% requirement and uh, whenever the class is scheduled all of you already have the schedule the class is scheduled you can come 5 minutes before this is for both the online and offline participants they should be here 5 minutes before exactly at the time starts will lock the door after that nobody will be allowed inside the classroom and uh, phones all of your fo mobile phones can be on silent those who are online their camera should be always switched on they should not switch off their cameras and uh, especially his grace premanam pro was uh, saying that those who are attending online actually it's a privilege that we are allowed to be attending it online otherwise generally we do not encourage that so proji said that they can preferably sit on a table chair and uh, they should not lie down or something on the bed nicely and uh, hear the classes and uh, and here also we want that we will be giving you the booklets so you can write your whatever notes you want to make you can make on the booklets itself don't bring laptops here and uh, attendance it will be taken by dharamveer pro it uh, he will take it 5 minutes before and those who are online they should write their full name not lenovo pc and asus pc all those things their full name can be written on the online thing water is kept outside the room you can take water and uh, after the class don't leave any belongings here you may not find it later on and uh, okay so these are some of the norms which we'll try to follow and those who feel that this is too much so you can hare krishna Hare Krishna. Okay, well, again, a uh, warm welcome to the Iskand Disciples Course. And as you may be aware, there are four units for the course, each having a few lists. You can distribute. done okay so since uh, chetan kishor pro has already mentioned some norms we would like to add to the list by mentioning a few more which are there in hands says page 86 but in any case we will just uh, read them one by one read read the first one and then pass it on so where are the mics and hope they are here here are you krishna here 
Yes, it goes in line. Yes. First, we will be present for the entire course. Second, uh, we will raise hands to contribute. Okay, so anyone wants to say something, ask questions, kindly raise hands. Third, we will value a student contributions, whether or not we agree with them. Okay, so students may give some answers, contributions, and uh, we may like some of them, we may not like some of them, agree with some of them, not agree, but in any case, we value them, okay? And not create controversies. Fourth, uh, we will refrain from made questions. Okay. We will refrain from making and receiving mobile phones calls during class. Next. We will observe confidentially within and without the classroom. Okay. If anything. Next. We will refrain from borrowing strength from status or position. Next. We respect the right of the individual to withdraw without stating reasons for any exercise which makes them feel unduly uncomfortable next we will each accept full responsibility for success in achieving our desired outcomes we will comfort issues or behavior not people we will each honor any agreement reached okay thank you So this is ISKCON Disciples course, which was developed by the ISKCON GBC Guru Services Committee in 2011. Prior to that, there was a Guru Seminar, which was designed by the GBC for gurus and as training for gurus and potential gurus. And uh, as the years passed, it was, uh, there was a need felt for appropriate training in order to become appropriate disciples hmm. so that one can serve the spiritual master, serve the ISKCON organization, and ultimately serve the entire Guru Parampara in in a way by which one can make good spiritual progress and so before of course there may have been informal training programs classes going on by various temples various process the form initiation process but the bc felt that there must be a mandatory formal training program for everyone for everyone before they get formally initiated and so taking this into consideration so many senior vaishnavas from our society they spent many hours in brainstorming and designing this very very systematic course so it took several months of hard endeavor by many many senior devotees to actually design this course which was fully launched in 2012 during the gaur Purnima festival in maipur and then from that there were a few teachers who were trained the world there are registered IDC course teachers and um, so therefore these and these teachers are teaching the course in various parts of the world so now what do you think are some of the areas of improvements there could be as disciples or potential disciples within ISKCON what are some of the areas of improvements that could be there for devotees to become disciples or how can we improve what are some of the ways we could improve as disciples how can we become better disciples is the question clear okay 
can we have someone to write here please anyone who can write swiftly and neatly okay good pencil there no no okay hmm okay can we have some contributions yes huh principles of sharnagat principles of sharnagati that's quite broad can you be a little more specific what are some of the areas we can improve uh, we can improve by following nicely the six principles of some basic principles of nagati so okay fine we... okay um practice the principles of surrender okay six principles of surrender yes bro i think so one mic can be yes okay keep one in the front one in behind so that circulation becomes easy hearing attentively to spiritual master okay hearing the spiritual master attentively okay improving dealings and behavior dealings and behavior with other devotees okay improving dealings and behavior with other devotees you could write a little bigger please instructions of spiritual master seriously okay have we, we didn't repeat that right uh okay this is instructions taking the instruction seriously hmm maybe a few more how can we improve yes increasing, increasing our faith and dedication towards Guru. okay increasing faith and dedication to the guru increasing faith and dedication to the guru somebody else yes bro this action of ourselves with the regular interval of time uh, by observing our own behavior we had something on behavior right okay uh, improving dealings and behavior with devotees are you talking about that or something else uh, no, inspection of our self regular inter interval of time towards, uh -huh. towards the progress uh, in this spiritual path okay fine so uh, some introspection self introspection about our own progress something more okay fine thank you bro so these are some of the ways in which uh, we could improve as uh, disciples within iskon by increasing our surrender of following the various principles of surrender and uh, improving our uh, hearing the spiritual master improving dealings behavior and knowing the guru tatva relationship with other gurus and iskon so these are some of the ways in which we could improve so now let's come to course aims which you can see in your handbook on page number 
So the course aims, the broad aim of the course is to improve the quality of discipleship within ISKCON in order to promote the long-term well-being of Srila Prabhupada society and its members. Okay, so that's the very broad aim of the course is to improve the quality of discipleship. That means in order to become better disciples within ISKCON so that ultimately the well-being of Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON society and the members of the society is promoted, is improved. That is the course broad aim. And we will achieve this by enabling students to first. Somebody can read that, please. Somebody can read that, please. Uh, understand the long standing principles of disciple, uh, discipleship as presented in the teachings of Sri Prabhupada and the broader Gaudi Vaishnava tradition, and appreciate the unique context in which these teachings are applied within ISKCON. Okay, so this is so the quality of discipleship can be improved by understanding the long-standing principles of discipleship, especially as Srila Prabhupada presented, and also in relation to the broader Gaudiya tradition and applying that within the context of ISKCON. Somebody read? You have a mic here, somebody read. Applying this principle here. to- Read from here. Applying this principle to form spiritually spiritually healthy constructive relationship with their gurus and senior personals act appropriately within those relationships okay so the next part is the application of those principles so first is understanding the tattva and the next is applying those principles in order for one to have spiritually healthy constructive relationships with gurus senior vaishnavas and act appropriately next Develop the values and attitudes required of a disciple. Yes. And the fourth one? Cooperately serve the Supreme and his various representatives in order to perpetuate Srila Prabhupada's teaching and mission through both personal example and instruction. Okay. So, so the third one is for oneself to improve values and attitudes as a disciple. And the fourth one is in relationship to the entire ISKCON organization to cooperate and uh, perpetuate, that means spread Srila Prabhupada's teachings and mission through both personal example and instruction. Hmm. So there is uh, one question for you. Maybe you could take two minutes to write that on page number seven, which is a personal, personal question. Here we saw it more generally. This is something personal. In what ways could I improve as a disciple? So this is for you personally. In what ways could I improve as a disciple? So each one can take, if you have the book, you can write in the book or write a notebook somewhere. Just two minutes for that. Okay, done. Okay, fine. So if you want to write more, you could write later. 
so these so now we'll just go through the list of the course principles and values so these are the important there are 10 principles and values of the entire course or the various important subject matters that we will be covering as part of the course so the first one is Srila Prabhupada's uh, as position as the preeminent Shiksha Guru second is allegiance to Iskon and Parampara third is respect for multiple authorities and senior Vaishnavas fourth is considerate selection of Diksha Guru fifth is faith in Guru's instructions Sixth, commitment to vows and Srila Prabhupada's mission. Seventh is exemplary sadhana, conduct and balanced lifestyle. Eighth is inquiry, humility and service. Ninth is favorable association, inclusivity and cooperation. And the tenth one is cultivation and propagation of the holy name. So these are the important principles and values of the course, which are of course given on page number seven of your handbooks regarding the assessment of the course Chaitanya Kishore Pro will be speaking about that later right and everyone has got a schedule of the entire course right okay so the course is continuing till Friday okay let's read this quote from Srila Prabhupada somebody read this please we have only to execute the order of the spiritual master preach krishna consciousness and follow in the path of the vaishnavas the spiritual master represents both lord krishna and the vaishnavas therefore by following the instructions of the spiritual master and by chanting hari krishna everything will be all right yes so the importance of executing the orders of the spiritual master and preaching and chanting so Prabhupada is emphasizing on the importance of following the instructions of the spiritual master okay so that's as far as the first lesson goes and now we will go on to lesson two So lesson two is Guru Tattva and Parampara. So this is unit one that we are covering. The first lesson is welcome and introduction. Lesson two is Guru Tattva and Parampara. Lesson three is Srila Prabhupada, Iskand founder Acharya. And lesson four is Iskand Gurus. Okay. So what do you think is the position of Guru or who is a Guru? What is your understanding of who is Guru? Yes, Prue. Guru is that person that make us go from darkness to the light. Okay, good. Okay, helps one to go from darkness to light. Okay, fine. Good. Something else? Yes, Prue. He is the external manifestation of our super soul. External manifestation of super soul. Good. Yes, bro. A uh, guru can give uh, Krishna to a disciple. Guru can give Krishna. Okay, fine. What else? Huh. 
रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ नितिन प्रो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ नितिन प्रो और बलराम ओके नित्यान प्रो और बलराम ओके गुड्स और एल्स इस प्रो गुरु इस डी पर्सन हुज वेरी डियर टू गुरु वेरी डियर टू कृष्णा ओके गुरु इस पर्सन हुज वेरी डियर टू कृष्णा दैट्स फाइन Guru is via medium to connect us with Krishna. Why medium to connect us with Krishna? That's fine. Yes, bro. One who teaches about Krishna is the guru. One who teaches about Krishna is guru. Somebody else? Yes, bro. Okay, teaches Vedic principles without adulteration. Fine. Yes, bro. Hmm. You picture the ah, article. Okay. ठीक है ठीक है गुरु इज वन हु शो अस द वे टू कृष्णा शो अस द वे टू कृष्णा वन ऑफ टू मोर आंसर्स यस गुरु इज वन हु हैज कंट्रोल्ड द सिक्स अर्जेस ओके वन हु हैज कंट्रोल्ड द सिक्स अर्जेस गुड यस प्रो गुरु मींस वन हु फॉलोस ऑल द टीचिंग्स ऑफ वेदास एंड टेल्स अस प्रैक्टिकली गिव्स द एग्जांपल हाउ टू लिव दैट एंड अटेन कृष्णा Okay, fine. That's a good answer. So uh, he teaches and also shows by his own practice. These are the online contributions. Uh, Vanya Mata Ji, Guru is representative of God, being servant of God. Okay, that's fine. Yes, that's right. Representative of God, servant of God. Guru is uh, incarnation of Lord. <laughs> This is one. Mercy, sorry, Guru is mercy incarnation. Mercy of God. incarnation of God, that's correct. And he is non-different from God, very intimate servant of God. Non-different from God. Okay, we'll discuss that. Guru is uh, living blessings of Krishna to us to practice devotional life. Mm -hmm. Guru is one who is uh, his own guru. Guru is one who is his own guru as it is. Guru is non-different from Krishna. Okay, fine. Okay, let's uh, read a few Prabhupada's quotes on the subject matter. Somebody read that, please. See, so try to pass it on. Hmm? Try to those who have not participated, give it to this group. Hmm. The the guru is. So okay, the, good, good. The, the guru is offered first the respectful prayers, one day guru and guru, bahu vachana, plural number, that many gurus. but they are not many they are one guru tatva yes so we will come we will be coming to this topic of uh, various types of gurus but we could there could be many gurus in one's life so there could be shiksha gurus diksha guru and uh, so many gurus could be there but then as we recite in the prayers during invocation one day hum shri guru so the word guru is used plural many gurus but as prabhu is saying over here even though there are many gurus the guru tatva is one why because all the gurus the all the bona fide gurus coming in parampara ultimately represent krishna krishna is the original guru and all other gurus are simply representations of the supreme personality of godhead why because all of them are simply repeating the message of the supreme lord the supreme lord his mission for this material world is to deliver all the conditioned souls the rebellious conditioned souls who because of their propensity to enjoy independent of the supreme lord they have been sent into this material world krishna as the loving father desires that all the conditioned souls ultimately come back to him and for that purpose the supreme lord sometimes himself comes sometimes his incarnations come and sometimes he sends his bona fide representatives for the same purpose of delivering 
the conditioned living entities and establishing the principles of religion. And so therefore, all the gurus who may be present are ultimately serving that same mission of the Supreme Lord. So therefore, Guru Tattva is one because they are all representatives of the Supreme Lord repeating the same message of the Supreme Lord. And so therefore, Guru Tattva is one. So it's not that one Guru speaks one thing, another Guru speaks other thing. Totally different. No, it can't be like that because ultimately all Gurus are representing Krishna and they repeat the message of Krishna. So this is from the Chaitanya Chaitamrit. Guru Krishna Rupa Mahoy Shastri Pramani Guru Rupe Krishna Kripa Karina Bhakta Dhane. Somebody read the translation, please. According to the deliberate uh, opinion of all revealed scriptures, the spiritual master is not different from Krishna. Lord Krishna, in the form of a spiritual master, delivers his devotees. Yes. So most of these quotes that we are showing on the screen are also there in your handbooks. You can see a number of quotes on page 11, 12, and so on. So uh, most of these quotes are taken from here. So here, we are discussing a few important ones. So here, Srila Prabhupada, or the verse itself in the Chaitanya Chaitamrit, is saying that the spiritual master is non-different from Krishna. Lord Krishna, in the form of the spiritual master, delivers his devotees. As we recite every day in the morning during Mangalarti, Sakshad Haritvena Samastha Shastri. So Sakshad Hari, the spiritual master is said to be Sakshad Hari. So therefore, it is said here also that he is not different from Krishna. But is he Krishna? Is he Krishna? No. Prabhupada, in so many of his lectures, Prabhupada would say that if if the guru thinks he is God, he proclaims himself God, he is not God, he is dog. And Prabhupada would be very emphatic on that point. So the guru can never be God, but at the same time, the Shastras are saying he is non different from God. So there are both the aspects. One aspect is he is non different, another aspect is there is a difference. Correct? So, in what aspect is he non different? Why is it said Sakshad Haritvena? He is as good as Hari. He is non different from Krishna. So, in what aspect he is non different from Krishna? Other? Guru is carrying the mercy of Lord and giving as it is to the. Guru is carrying the mercy of God. Okay, good. Something else? Yes. Yeah, Agi. He deserves the same respect as God. Okay, deserves the same respect. Why does he deserve the same respect? Yes, bro. Go piche wala de do. Yeah. Because uh, Puji, we, uh, we cannot understand what Krishna wants, but Guru is repeating exactly what Krishna wants. So he's directly representing Krishna to us. Good. Because the Guru is repeating the message of God. So because he's repeating the message of God, because he is repeating the instructions of God, which are non different from God. Right? Everything in connection to the Supreme Lord, everything in connection to Krishna is on the absolute platform. So Krishna is Nam, Roop, Guna, Leela, instructions. Everything is on the absolute platform. So therefore, because he's repeating the instructions of the Supreme Lord, 
which are non-different from the Supreme Lord. So therefore, he is said to be non-different from Krishna. Because he is a transparent via medium of the Supreme Lords. So, as uh, during the during Shri Prabhupada's Vyas Puja celebrations, we were explaining the meaning of Vyas Puja. And so, there we were quoting Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada gives the example of the Viceroy. The Viceroy, during the British times, the Viceroy represents the British Queen. And because he, represents, he represented the British Queen, so therefore, he was given the same respect as the British Queen. He was given so many gifts and so, many, so much of wealth because he's representative of the Queen of England. So therefore, he gets the same respects. So similarly, because the Guru is repeating the same message, in other words, he's representing the Supreme Lord, so therefore he's said to be non-different from the Lord. Then the next question arises, then in what way is he different? In what way is he different? Yes, bro. So, a guru can be uh, a jiva tattva and can be uh, incarnation as like Vyasadeva. Uh, incarnation, literary incarnation, but he cannot be uh, Vishnu Tattva. He can be Vishnu, but Vishnu Tattva himself can, can, can act as a guru, but Jiva cannot become as a Vishnu Tattva. Yes, yeah, so that's the basic difference. So the basic difference is the guru is usually in the category of Jiva Tattva, whereas Krishna or the Supreme Lord is Vishnu Tattva. So there is that basic difference always exists between the Guru and the Supreme Lord. So therefore, the Guru can never be the Supreme Lord. And of course, philosophically, there are so many uh, quotes and so many points that can be discussed from Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam that the Guru can never be God. So therefore, it's important for us to understand that one should not have that sort of expectation from the guru that is as good as god means he should be able to perform everything and anything mm. so there is a difference so even though the guru is representative but still the guru being a jiva and then he has a material body so therefore, he's going to be subjected to the changes, transformations, the body undergoes. The body is going to grow old and diseased. So one cannot think, oh, why, why is the guru getting disease? Huh? Or sometimes there may be some sims of old age like forgetfulness uh, or some other symptoms of old age could be there. So therefore, one has to understand that this basic difference between Guru and Krishna always exists. And therefore, it's not that one should think that the Guru should uh, know all subject matters, physics, chemistry, biology, and everything, all subject matters in the universe that exist. No. But, the, but he definitely knows the essence of everything. He definitely knows the source of all knowledge. That he definitely knows. But he may not know all the details. Similarly, we can't expect that the guru should know, should have so many material skills. He should know how to drive a car and he should know 
how to do perfect management and uh, you should know how to uh, how to play all musical instruments now so we should understand the facts that there is a difference between god and guru and so therefore we should uh, understand the reality and not have over expectations or unnecessary expectations from the guru okay another quote from the shaitan shatamra please read the relationship of a disciple with his spiritual master is as good as his relationship with supreme lord a spiritual master always represents himself as the humblest servant of the personality of godhead but the disciple must look upon him as the manifested representation of godhead yes so the spiritual master himself he always represents himself as the servitor a humble servitor of the supreme lord in fact the guru also considers himself a servant of all his disciples because ultimately that's the constitutional position of every jeeva jeevara swarup hoy krishna nitya das and so therefore the guru is also performing his service towards the supreme lord and so he always presents himself as such but the disciple then he must look upon him as the representation of the supreme lord and must offer all respect to him as that is given to god so you may have heard that past time when some envious newspaper reporter was asking shri prabhupad that swami ji why why these disciples are providing such costly cars hmm. for you hmm? so prabhupad in the later years would be driven in mercedes and rolls royce and so many of the latest cars available hmm. and so on newspaper reporter once asked and so shri prabhupad said what car is this made of iron mm. as a representative of the supreme lord they should have actually provided one with gold uh, prabhupad was not saying that out of vanity or pride but he was saying that to make the points that the as far as the disciples are concerned then the disciples they give respect to the to the guru as much as given to god because he is representative not that the guru demands it right not that the guru demands it but if the disciple provide then yes then he uses them in krishna's service as a servant of the supreme lord okay ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ so the verse here krishna himself is speaking this verse to uddhav acharya mam vijaniya one should consider the acharya to be as good as the supreme personality of godets um this is actually an important verse and a very important purport you have a laptop right could you open this verse it's a very beautiful and relevant purport don't listen ಅ 
Okay. ओके आचार्यम माम विजानिया नाव मनियत कर हिचत न मर्थ्य बुद्ध्यासुयेत सर्व देव मयो गुरु वन शुनो दी आचार्या एस माय सेल्फ एंड नेवर डिसरेस्पेक्ट हिम इन एनी वे वन शुन नॉट एनवी हिम थिंकिंग हिम एन ऑर्डिनरी मैन फॉर ही इज़ द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ़ ऑल द डेमिगॉड्स वर्स इन द चेतन so there he mentions and i'll read a few maybe important points okay this is a verse from shrimad bhagavatam 11:17:27 spoken by lord shri krishna when he was questioned by uddhav regarding the four social and spiritual orders of society he was specifically instructing how a brahmachari should behave under the care of a spiritual master a spiritual master is not an enjoyer of facilities offered by his disciples he is like a parent without the attentive service of his parents a child cannot grow to manhood similarly without the care of the spiritual master one cannot rise to the plane of transcendental service okay so that's the duty of the spiritual master to take care to take care of the disciples and help them grow on the spiritual path so just like a parent takes care of the child and grooms the child so that the child is properly trained to behave well and gives the education and all that so that he becomes a responsible citizen in the future where he can earn his livelihoods and carry on his duties so similarly the spiritual master is also like a parent taking care of the disciple so that he grows on the spiritual path and ultimately achieves perfection The spiritual master is also called acharya or a transcendental professor of spiritual science. Manu Samhita explains the duties of an acharya, describing that a bona fide spiritual master accepts charge of disciples, teaches them the Vedic knowledge with all intricacies, and gives them their second births. Okay, so here Prabhupada is quoting from the Manu Samhita, talking about three important duties of the acharya. Okay. Three important duties of the acharya. What are they? First one is describe. Um, so accepting charge of the disciples. We'll be coming to this discussion again, but anyway. So the guru he takes charge of delivering the disciples from the cycle of birth and death. You may have heard the famous words from Lord Rishabh Dev. Guru na sasyat, swaj na sasyat, pita na sasyat. That verse says that unless one one is able to fulfill that responsibility of delivering the disciples from the cycle of birth and death, then one should not become a guru. So therefore, that is the responsibility of the bona fide spiritual master. And so for that, he teaches them the Vedic knowledge with all its intricacies and gives them their second birth. So the ceremony performed to initiate a disciple into the study of spiritual science is called upaniti or the function that brings one nearer to the spiritual master so you have heard the ceremony upanayan so one comes closer to the spiritual master by that one who cannot be brought nearer to spiritual master cannot have a sacred thread and thus it is indicated to and thus he is indicated to be a shudra the sacred thread worn on the body of a brahmana kshatriya vaishya is a symbol of initiation by the spiritual master it is worth nothing if worn merely to boast of high parentage as prophet said what's the value of the two paisa thread so the thread by itself has no value the duty of the spiritual master is to initiate a disciple with the sacred thread ceremony and after the sanskar or purificatory process the spiritual master actually begins to teach the disciple about the vedas so it said usually after one becomes dvija then one is qualified to study the vedas a person born a shudra is not barred from such spiritual initiation provided he is approved by the spiritual master who is duly authorized to award a disciple the right to be a brahmana if he finds him perfectly qualified so then it doesn't really matter what is the birth everyone can become qualified there is that famous uh, analogy which the prophet would often quote sanatan goswami giving the example of bell metal can be turned into gold by the process of alchemy 
So anyone following the process, then he, anyone who performs the process, then he can turn the bell metal into gold, irrespective of from where he's coming or which caste he, com he comes from. So similarly, anyone can become a Brahman and ultimately a Vaishnava if one follows the bona fide process. In the Vayu Puran, an Acharya is defined as one who teaches the import of all the Vedic literatures, abides by the rules and regulations, and teaches his disciples to act in the same way. Here again, the, there are three important qualifications for the Acharya mentioned here from the Vayu Puran. The first is he knows the import of all the Vedic literatures. Simply knowing is not sufficient. And there are many people, even in the outside world, so many so-called gurus who may know Shastra, speak eloquently about Shastra. But that's not sufficient. Famous lecture of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada say, say, talks about his experience in Allahabad, Prayagaraj, not far from here. He says, I have personally seen there was this big, big Mayavadi sannyasi. He gave a big, big talk, big, big lecture. Thousands of people attended. At the end of his talk, he went behind the stage and asked, Where is PD? Okay, so that's useless. And that talk of that sort of talk is useless. Uh, so therefore, the next important qualification is that he abides by the rules and regulations himself. And then he teaches his disciples to act in the same way. And then, of course, if he himself is practicing, then disciples will be inspired to also follow. Only out of his immense compassion does the personality of God reveal himself as the spiritual master. Okay, so representation of the Supreme Lord is the spiritual master. Therefore, in the dealings of an Acharya, there are no activities but those of transcendental loving service to the Lord. He is the supreme personality of servitor godheads. Okay? Supreme personality of servitor godheads. It is worthwhile to take shelter of such a steady devotee who is called Ashraya Bigraha or the manifestation or form of the Lord of whom one must take shelter. Okay? So, a steady devotee who is properly representing the Supreme Lord is worth taking shelter. So therefore, he's called as the Ashraya Vigraha. If one poses himself as an Acharya but does not have an attitude of servitorship to the Lord, he must be considered an offender, and this offensive attitude disqualifies him from being an Acharya. So he's always engaged in unloyed devotional service, by this test, he is known to be a direct manifestation of the Lord and a genuine representative of Sri Nityanand Prabhu. Such a spiritual master is known as Acharya Dev, influenced by an envious temperament and dissatisfied because of an attitude of sense gratification, Monday, the spiritual is a real Acharya. Okay. And as mentioned previously, a disciple should always respect the spiritual master as a manifestation of Sri Krishna. But at the same time, one should always remember that the spiritual master is never authorized to imitate the transcendental pastimes of the lords. And then false spiritual masters pose themselves as identical with Sri Krishna in every respect to exploit the sentiments of the disciples. But such impersonalists can only mislead the disciples for the ultimate aim is to become one with the Lord. This is against the principles of the devotional cults. Okay, and towards the end of the purport, Prabhupada is quoting, uh, following in the footsteps of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami and Sri Jiva Goswami, later Acharyas like Srila Vishnu Chakra Thakur have confirmed the same truths. In his prayers to the spiritual master, Srila Vishnu Chakra Thakur confirms that all the revealed scriptures acts of the spiritual master be identical with the personality of Godhead because he is a very dear and confidential servant of the Lord's. Gaudiya Vaishnavas therefore worship Srila Gurudev, the spiritual master, in the light of his being the servitor of the personality of Godhead. In all the ancient literatures of devotional service and more recent songs of Srila Narutam, the Stankar, Srila Bhakti Narutakur, and other unalloyed Vaishnavas, the spiritual master is always considered to be either one of the confidential associates of Srimati Radharani or a manifested representation of Srila Nityanand Prabhu. Okay, so that was on that verse. Mm. Sorry. Okay, somebody can. Guru Tattva, a postman may deliver us a hundred dollars, but we do not consider that the postman is giving us a hundred dollars. The money is sent by a friend, and it is simply the postman's business to hand it over 
as it is without taking anything or adding anything to it Mm. Continue, please. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay. His perfection is that he delivers the hundred dollars as it is sent by one strand. That is his perfection. The postman may be imperfect in so many ways, but when he does his business perfectly, he is perfect. Mm. Prabhupada often said, <clears throat> gave this example. That the guru is like a postal peon so just like the postman simply delivers the money as it is not that he takes some few rupees from that or he adds something to no he just gives it as it is maybe not many people use this way of transactions these days but in any case still makes the point so the point is that similarly the spiritual master repeats the message of Krishna as it is. Yaradeko tarikaho Krishna upadesh amar agnyai guru hoitar edesh. So, Shil Prabhupada in his lectures, he would very often quote this verse and say, Krishna upadesh, don't give your upadesh. So, one has to simply repeat the message of Krishna as it is without additions, fractions, concoctions. No, simply repeat. Then he is perfect. There's that well-known conversation. Shri Prabhupada was asked by a newspaper reporter, are you perfect? Prabhupada said, no, I'm not perfect, but the message I'm repeating is perfect. The perfection of the guru is in repeating the message as it is. Mm. Somebody, somebody read this. Generally, the spiritual master comes from the group of such eternal associates of the Lord. But anyone who follows the principle of such ever liberated person, persons is as good as one in the above mentioned group. Continue. A person who is liberated Acharya and Guru cannot commit any mistake. But there are persons who are less qualified or less not liberated, but still can act as Guru and Acharya by strictly following the disciplic succession. So here, Prabhupada is saying, so generally the special master comes from the group of such eternal associates of the Lord. But anyone who follows the principles of such ever liberated persons is as good. And here again, uh, so one can become, one can still act as a guru and acharya by strictly following the disciplic succession. So, Srila Prabhupada in, other, in his purports also, he mentions this point. So who is a liberated person? One who follows a liberated person. So therefore, it is not that the guru has to be some nitya siddha or one who is absolutely on the liberated platform but of course if somebody is following the process if somebody is following the process towards liberation then he is on the liberated platform if somebody is following the disciplic succession properly then he is to be considered on the liberated platform hmm. Why? Because it's just a matter of time. A raw mango, ripe mango. Is the raw mango a mango or no? Still a mango, right? It's just a matter of time. That it'll become ripe as long as it's connected to the tree. Of course, these, these, these days they're artificial ways of ripening, but then we're not taking that into consideration. But the point is that uh, still a mango still a mango so similarly if one is properly following the path of the liberated personalities 
one is following the mahajans one is following the disciplic succession then he is as good as being on the liberated platform so to add to that you can see in your handbooks page number 11 So you can see the last quote there. Somebody read it. Take the mic, please. If you follow pure devotee, then you are also pure devotee. So if you follow pure devotee, then you are also pure devotee. It may not be one in cent percent pure because we are trying to raise ourselves from the conditioned life, conditional life. But if we strictly follow the pure devotee. then we are also pure devotee so far we do that is pure pure so pure de devotee does not mean one has to become immediately 100% pure but if he sticks to the principle that we will follow a pure devotee then his actions are he is as good as pure devotee okay the same point is also repeated by krishna skaraj goswami in the chetan chetamrita that anyone who follows a pure devotee is a pure devotee he may not be sent person purified he may not be sent person pure but if he is strictly following the pure devotee then he is as good as a pure devotee therefore when shri prabhupada was asked by the newspaper reporter how many pure devotees are there in your movements shri prabhupada asked the devotee how many devotees are there that many pure devotees ah and of course shri prabhupada had a very broad vision once after rath yatra shri prabhupada was in america shri prabhupada was asked again so swami ji how many followers do you have in this country prabhupada replied unlimited uh, and all the devotees hurry bol they shouted and then prabhupada clarified some know it some don't Uh, that's the only difference but the point is that yes that as long as one is following as long as one is following strictly the principles given by the pure devotees then he is called a pure devotee hmm so therefore anyone who is strictly following the process given by shri prabhupada the basic fundamental process chanting 16 rounds following four regulatory principles and the other rules and regulations is to be considered a pure devotee he may not be a 100% purified devotee but he is a pure devotee okay similarly one may not be on the liberated platform everyone understands what's the liberated platform free from material desires what's the liberated platform yes liberation basically means free from the influence of three modes okay and that obviously means no material desires but uh, but yeah so that's the liberated platform free from the influence of the three modes which is of course a very high platform but uh, so one may not be exactly on that platform of total freedom from the influence of three modes but because one is strictly following a liberated acharya then one is to be considered on the liberated platform and thus qualified to become a guru okay before we go to the next topic okay maybe we'll finish the next topic and then take questions okay maybe we will take questions first okay if there are no questions we'll proceed forwards any questions okay go ahead so ji in this in this proji first line it's written that a person who is a liberated acharya and guru cannot commit any mistake so should we understand that the nitya siddhas because just now we discussed that a guru also has a material body and he is also subjected to forgetfulness and other things like that 
because of which he may commit certain mistakes materially so this statement is made probably so in what context this is statement. yes he doesn't make any mistakes spiritually on the spiritual platform whatever he speaks is perfect because it's coming from the perfect source all right like in one conversation like propad like dr patel asked from propad that his guru is having material body then propad says no guru is not having material body so yes so like in what context we can understand this okay propad's famous example again put the iron rod in fire what happens huh that's more precise it becomes fiery does the iron rod become fire it still remains iron rod correct it still remains iron rod but it acts like fire because of being in contact with fire it performs the same functions as the fire if you take that iron rod out of fire and you touch it will you get a cooling sensation what will happen your hand will burn just like putting the hand in fire it is as good as fire even though it is still iron rod so similarly material body may be there but because it is being sent percent used in krishna's service uh -huh. so body mind words everything is being used in krishna's service so therefore such a person is called as a jeevan mukta is liberated even while having a material body so that is the meaning so material body is there but because it is being 100% used in krishna service therefore it is spiritualized and so therefore the body of such an acharya is not burnt rather put to samadhi okay Yes, bro. Behind. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, bro. Hare Krishna. Uh, that we heard ki, uh, that like anyone who is repeating the message of God is guru. And we also heard ki like anyone uh, who is following a pure devotee, he himself may not be cent percent pure. but uh, if he is following a pure devotee then he is a pure devotee so that means ki he can also become a guru yes and uh, so uh, like uh, those who are our uh, immediate superiors uh, they they also uh, like uh, will if because they are repeating the same message of krishna so uh, they will also like uh, be a part of guru tatva Yes, it's correct. We'll come to that discussion. We we'll discuss types of gurus, so we'll come to that discussion. Okay. But mm -hmm. the answer to your question is yes. On our part, like respect-wise and all. all uh, yes. So Listen we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay. Any other question on what we discussed? Yes. Ji, this was from Sachcha Dhari Tone Samasya. So it is applicable for all the gurus, all the present gurus, or Sila Prabhupada. because yesterday matlab gopal krishna samara is telling that it is applicable to only sila prapat so here sakshat hari tvena so we already discussed the point why is the guru considered sakshat hari yes because he is repeating the message of krishna so because he is because a guru any guru is repeat is repeating the message of krishna therefore he is as good as god So this is what Shastra is saying. Sakshat Hari Tvena. Who is saying this? Vishnu Shukhtagur is saying. One of our Acharya. He is saying Sakshat Hari Tvena. Samastha Shastra. All the Shastras are saying. So it applies to all gurus. Is it specified which guru or something like that? Is it specified? No. For all. Because message of Krishna non-different from Krishna. Anyone who is repeating that message is non-different. Okay. Yes. So, Ji, like we see in our parampara and other parampara also, that all the 
gurus or the those persons having thousands of disciples they all are very exalted pure devotees only and all are like liberated kind of personalities through any example of shastras where we can see a person may not be fully purified but following a pure devotee and having thousands of disciples and acting as a guru in large scale so any example could we see the history of vedas so you are uh, asking a shastric example uh, for the person who is not 100% pure as it is at him 100% pure he purified mm. pure mm. but acting as a guru or a pure devotee because he is following someone who is very pure and having thousand of disciple like kind of okay so uh, we can see that uh, in the uh, chaitanya charitamrit hmm? that's shastra right so chaitanya charitamrit we find when shri prab i mean when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu went on a south indian yatra he went on a south indian yatra and mahaprabhu by his glance simply by his glance would purify someone that person would go to his village and then he would deliver so many other people right so uh, so they so so we see that by mahaprabhu's mercy it was possible by mahaprabhu's mercy it was possible so therefore and as we will be studying these points a little bit later again but uh, the point does remain that when one is empowered when one is empowered by uh, one's own authority by one's by the guru parampara then on the basis of that authority one has the potency to deliver others as okay there's one point i sort of missed it actually in one of the quotes Hmm. Lord Krishna, in the form of the spiritual master, delivers his devotees. Who delivers? Lord Krishna. Ultimately, it is only Lord Krishna who delivers. Nobody else has the potency to deliver. Even Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, no one has the potency to deliver. Uh, somebody could quickly open bhagavad gita 714 devesh gunamai mamaya duratya go to the end of the purport the words mamaya Hmm. So, uh, the words "ma" may be also significant. "Ma" means unto Krishna only, and not Brahma or Shiva. Although Brahma and Shiva are greatly elevated and are almost on the level of Vishnu, it is not possible for such incarnations of Rajogun and Tamogun to release the conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. In other words, both Brahma and Shiva are also under the influence of Maya. only vishnu is the master of maya therefore he alone can give release to the conditioned soul the vedas confirm this in the phrase tam eva vidatma or freedom is possible only by understanding krishna even lord shiva affirms that liberation can be achieved only by the mercy of vishnu lord shiva says mukti pradata sarvesham vishnu eva na samshaya there is no doubt that vishnu is the deliverer of liberation for everyone so ultimately the deliverer is krishna he is the only deliverer but the bona fide guru becomes a via medium the example of the postman the via medium of krishna's mercy the devotee which delivers the conditioned soul okay and so therefore 
how does one connect to Krishna's mercy? How does one connect to Krishna's mercy? Through the Guru Parampara. That is the connection. And so, therefore, anyone who's properly connected to the Guru Parampara can become a via medium or a carrier of Krishna's mercy. Is the point clear? Okay. Uh, maybe we have time for one question. Yes, Prabhu. Lord's incarnations like Rishabh Dev, Kapil Dev, they come, so they are also Guru Tattva because uh, this, they are also to be considered as Guru Tattva. Yes, why not? The Supreme Lord is the original Guru. So he's the original Guru. And so all the incarnations, they're also Gurus, definitely. Because ultimately, what are they all doing? They're all teaching. They're all teaching the principles of Dharma. So yes, they're all gurus. Okay. Okay, one last question. You see, as a guru is infallible, but when we, when we see that in the uh, case, that he's fallen from his uh, condition by because Baramis killed him. So why is it that, uh, that he got? Okay, fine. Um, Maybe this topic would be discussed in uh, Guru Tiyag or some other. Anyway, since you asked the question, I'll address it. So yes, as we already made the point clear, what is the difference between Guru and God? Jiva Tattva. Jiva Tattva. And as Krishna is speaking in the uh, 18th chapter, I'm sorry, in the uh, 16th chapter, 15th chapter of the Gita, sorry. He speaks about two types of living entities, Shar and Akshar. Fallible, infallible. So, the Jeevas, they're fallible. Correct? All the Jeevas are fallible, except those who are Nitya Siddhas. The Nitya Siddhas, they're infallible. But all other Jeevas are fallible. And so, therefore, the Guru also belongs to the Jiva Tattva category. And as we just explained, his strength to deliver is coming from whom? Is coming from Krishna. So his strength remains as long as he is connected to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada gave the example. All these lights are here. Why are they able to burn and give lights? Connection to the powerhouse. Uh, you could have these lights or you could have beautiful chandeliers with so many bulbs. Looks very nice. But if there's no connection, useless. So similarly, the qualification of the Guru is the connection to the Parampara. That's the most important qualification. If the connection to the Parampara is not there, then Sampradaya Vihina Mantrasye Nishvalahamata. If the connection to the Sampradaya is not there, there's no potency there. Empty bullets. No potency. So, the person could be an eloquent speaker and uh, so well versed in all the shastras, quoting so many hundreds of verses, everything may be there. But if there's no connection to the parampara, there's no potency there. The potency comes because of the connection to the parampara. That's where the potency comes from. Okay. And so, therefore, the Guru continues to have the potency as long as he himself is following the instructions of the Guru Parampara by which he receives the potency. 
the moment he stops following moment he stops following what happens connection is cut connection is lost when connection is lost no more potency is the point clear fine so we end here at this point and uh, we continue next class so the next class is at what time everyone knows wh when is the time for the next class yes 2 30 pm so we will continue uh, discussions that time we are a little behind schedule we'll try to cover it up somewhere okay fine thank you all very much Srila Prabhupada ki jai Samir Gaur Bhakrand ki jai Hare Krishna Not more to go. Just the beginning. Just I would like to know how many uh, registered participants have not got the this thing IDC booklets. One, two, three, four. That's all. Four booklets. That's all. Any other? As a non-registered. Uh, how many non-registered have the booklets? Anyone here who is not registered? All are registered. Acha, you are one. Okay. So non-registered, please don't use the booklets. Otherwise, it will cause some problem. So four booklets I will arrange. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Ah, PDC also. You, how many are there? PDC don't don't have the booklet. So give us another four booklet, na four booklets. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, please not refer. Okay, Thank you.